Hello everyone, welcome to LBSIS. Today we are going to discuss CSAT previous year questions. We will be solving CSAT's maths and reasoning questions using speed matrix. So let's start our session. Our first question is In an examination, maximum marks for each of the four purpose, namely P, Q, R, and S are 100. Marks scored by the students are in integers. A student can score 99% using n different ways. What is the value of n? Here, total max is 100 for each paper. That means total marks for 4 purpose is 400. And 99 percentage of 400 is 396. Here, 10 percentage is 40 and 1 percentage is 4. That means 99 percentage is 400 minus 4. That is equal to 396. If a student score 99 in 4 subjects, that means he scored total 396 marks. So, number of ways a student can score 99 in 4 subject is 1 way. That is, here there are 4 elements. So, 4 factorial divided by 99 is repeated 4 times. So, repeated element is 4. So, 4 factorial by 4 factorial is equal to 1. So, this is 1 way. Again, if a student score 99 in 2 subject and 98 in another subject and 100 in another subject. That means total element is 4. So, 4 factorial divided by here 99 repeated 2 times. So, repeated element is 2. So, divided by 2 factorial. That is equal to 2 factorial into 3 into 4 divided by 2 factorial. So, that is equal to 3 into 4 is equal to 12 ways. Again, if a student score 99 in one subject and 97 in another subject and 100 in other two subjects, that means total 396 marks. So, total element is 4 factorial divided by here 100 repeated 2 times. So, repeated elements are 2. So, 2 divided by 2 factorial that is equal to same as 12 ways. Again, if a student score 98 in 2 subjects and 100 in another 2 subjects. That means total 396 marks. So, total element is 4. So, 4 factorial divided by here 100 repeated 2 times and 98 repeated 2 times. So, 2 elements repeated 2 times. So, 2 factorial into 2 factorial. So, that is equal to 2 factorial into 3 into 4 divided by 2 factorial into 1 into 2. So, that is equal to 6 ways. Again, if a student score 96 in one subject and 100 in other 3 subjects, that means total elements is 4. So, 4 factorial divided by 100 repeated 3 times. So, divided by 3 factorial. Repeated elements is 3 factorial. So, that is equal to 3 factorial into 4 divided by 3 factorial. So, that is equal to 4 ways. So, here total number of ways. Total number of ways equal to 1 plus 12 plus 12 plus 6 plus 4. So, that is equal to 35 ways. So, option D is your answer. A flag has to be designed with four horizontal stripes using some or all of the colors red, green and yellow. What is the number of different ways in which this can be done so that no two adjacent stripes have the same color? Here you can use symbol chair concept that is here you have three colors that is red, green and yellow and you have four stripes here. In the first stripe you can choose any of these three colors that is you can fill the first stripe in three ways. Again in the second stripe you have only two colors remaining because if you choose red here you cannot choose red in the second stripe because no two adjacent stripes have the same color. So that means you can 
choose two colors two ways you can fill the second stripe again in the third stripe you cannot choose the color of the second stripe so you have two colors remaining then you can fill the third stripes in two ways again in the fourth stripe you cannot choose the color of the third stripe so you have two color remaining that means you can fill the fourth stripe in two ways so the total number of ways you can design this flag is 3 into 2 into 2 that is 3 into 2 into 2 into 2 that is 24 ways so option c is your answer if you have doubt this is the flag and you have in the first stripe you can choose red green or yellow that is you have you can fill this first stripe in three ways again if i choose red here that means you can only choose green or yellow here that means you can fill second stripe in two ways again if i choose green here that means the remaining colors are red and yellow so third stripe you can fill the color in two ways again if i choose red here you can only choose yellow or green here that means in the fourth stripe you can fill the color in two ways so total number of ways is 3 into 2 into 2 into 2 that is 24 ways these are the possibilities if you have doubt check this these are the possibilities let p q r s and t b five statements such that if p is true then both q and s are true that is when p is true both q and s are true if r and s are true then t is false if r and s are true then t is false which of the following can be concluded Conclusion 1. If T is true, then at least one of P and R must be false. Let's check when T is true. Here from the second statement, when T is false, R and S is true. That means when T is true, R and S must be false. So we already find the status of R when T is true. That is R is false here. So Conclusion 1 seems to be correct, but let's check the status of P also. Here, when T is true, S is false. So, if you look at the first statement, when both Q and S are true, that means P is true. So, here when S is false, but we don't know the status of Q here. So, P can be true or false. P may be true or false because we don't know the status of Q here. So. We can't find the status of P here because we don't know the status of Q. But conclusion 1 is correct because at least one of P and R must be false. Here R is already false. So conclusion 1 is correct. And if you look at the conclusion 2, if Q is true, then P is true. If Q is true, but we don't know the status of S here. From the First statement, when both Q and S are true, P is true. But when Q is true and we don't know the status of S, then we cannot find the status of P. So, conclusion 2 is incorrect. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Here, answer to this question is option A. Statement 1 only is correct. Conclusion 1 only is correct. Consider the following statements in respect of 5 candidates P, Q, R, S and T. Two statements are true and one statement is false. First statement is one of P and Q was selected for the job. This is a true statement. That means either P or Q is selected. And one is definitely selected from P and Q. Second statement is at least one of R and S was selected for the job. This is a false statement. That means none of R and S is selected that means zero candidates selected from r and s here at least one means at least one means either r 
or us or both are and us can be selected. But this is a for statement. That means none of are and us is selected. Third statement is at most two of are us and T were selected for the job. This is a true statement. Here we already know R and S is not selected. So here R and S is not selected. That means T can be selected. But at most, at most two means either zero can be selected or one can be selected or two can be selected. That is minimum zero people or maximum two people. So here T can be or cannot be selected. So we are not sure about status of T here. Either zero or one can be selected from here, from the third statement. So which of the following conclusion can be drawn? Conclusion one, at least four were selected for the job. Here you can see from P and Q, one can be selected. And from R, S and T, either 0 or 1 can be selected. So maximum 2 people can be selected. So at least 4 is wrong statement. Conclusion 2 is S was selected for the job. Here we already know from the second statement, S is not selected. So conclusion 2 is also wrong. Select the correct answer using the quotes given below. Here answer to this question is option D. Neither 1 nor 2 is correct. There are five persons, P, Q, R, S and T, each one of whom has to be assigned one task. Neither P nor Q can be assigned task 1. Task 2 must be assigned to either R or S. In how many ways can the assignment be done? Here there are five people and there are five tasks because each people should get one task. Let's check. This is task 1, this is task 2, task 3, task 4 and task 5. And there are 5 people P, Q, R, S and T. But in the question there are 2 conditions that is neither P nor Q can be assigned task 1. So this task 1 cannot assign to P and Q. That is remaining is 3 people R, S and T. And another condition is task 2 must be assigned to either R or S. So task 2 must be completed by R or S. So number of ways means number of ways is equal to here task 2 can be completed in two ways because either by assigning to R or by assigning to S. And if you look at task 1, let's check. If task 2 is assigned to R, that means R get cancelled here. So ta task 1 can be completed by either by S or by T. So number of ways is equal to 2. And if you look at the other condition that is if task 2 is assigned to S, that means task 1 can be completed by R or T. Even in that condition, task 1 can be assigned to 2 people. So, number of ways is equal to 2 ways. If you have doubt, if task 2 is assigned to R, that means task 1 cannot assign to R. So, the remaining option is S or T. So, 2 conditions, 2, pay, two ways. Again, if task 2 is assigned to S. That means task 1 cannot assign to S. So, remaining options are R or T. So, in both the cases, only two people involved. So, two ways is the answer. Again, if you look at task 3, already task 1 and task 2 assigned to two people. The remaining is 5 minus 2, 3 people. So, can be completed in three ways. Again, if you look at task 4, 3 tasks has been assigned to 3 people. Remaining is 2 people. So task 4 can be completed in 2 ways. Again if you look at task 5. 4 tasks has been assigned to 4 people. The remaining is 1 people. So task 1 can be completed in 1 way. So the total number of ways 2 into 2 4. 4 into 3 12. 12 into 2 24 ways. So option D is your answer. Consider the following. A plus B means A is neither smaller nor equal to B. That means A is definitely greater than B. A minus B means A is not greater than B. That means A is definitely less than or equal to B. 
a into b means a is not smaller than b that means a is definitely greater than or equal to b a division b means a is neither greater nor equal to b that means a is definitely less than b a plus or minus b means a is neither smaller nor greater than b that means a is definitely equal to b here you have one statement and two conclusion which one of the following is correct in respect of the above statement and conclusions your statement says p into q here into means greater than or equal to and here minus means less than or equal to and here division means less than and here plus or minus means equal to and in conclusion plus or minus is equal to and plus is equal to greater than so your statement is p greater than or equal to q p less than or equal to t and t less than r and r equal to s and your conclusion says q equal to t and s greater than q now you can see conclusion start with us so i will write the statement in a meaningful form and start with us here s equal to r from the statement and r greater than t from the statement and t greater than or equal to p from the statement and p greater than or equal to q from the statement now you can clearly see conclusion one says q equal to t but here if you check q less than or equal to p and p less than or equal to t so from that we can definitely say q is less than or equal to t so q equal to t is a wrong statement so conclusion one is wrong if you check the conclusion two s greater than q here you can see s is equal to r and r greater than t definitely means s is greater than t now you can see t greater than or equal to p and p greater than or equal to q so that means s is definitely greater than q s is definitely greater than q so conclusion 2 is a correct statement because s is greater than t and t greater than or equal to q so that means s is definitely greater than q so here from the option option b is the correct answer because only conclusion 2 follows from the statement both the children are standing in a circle and one of them say child one has a ring the ring is passed clockwise child 1 passes on to child 2 child 2 passes on to child 4 child 4 passes on to child 7 and so on after how many such changes including child 1 will the ring be in the hands of child 1 again here using formula method is not necessary because there are only 40 children if you use the formula method it will consume more time here you can directly find the answer using these numbers that is Child 1 passes on to child 2 and child 2 passes on to child 4, child 4 passes on to child 7 and so on. That means here you can see 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4 and 4 plus 3 is 7. Again 7 plus 4 will be 11 because it, this is in, this difference is in 1, 2, 3 order. So running numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 etc. So 7 plus 4 is 11, 11 plus 5 is 16 16 plus 6 is 22 22 plus 7 is 29 29 plus 8 is 37 again 37 plus 9 you can see 37 plus 3 is 40 there are only 40 children again 40 plus 6 will be 6 because the children are standing in a clockwise direction so after 40, again this will be in hands of 6th child. The ring will be in hands of 6th child according to the pattern. So after 6th child, it will be in 6 plus 10, 16th child. Again 16 plus 11 is 27 and 27 plus 12 is 39 again 39 plus 13 39 plus 1 is 40 40 plus 12 is 12 again 12 plus 
14 is 26. Now you can see 26 plus 15 is 1 again. That is after 15 such changes the ring will be in the hands of child 1 again. So your answer is option B. A box contains 14 black balls, 20 blue balls, 26 pink balls, 28 yellow balls, 38 red balls and 54 white balls. Consider the following statements. Statement number 1. The smallest number n such that any n balls drawn from the box randomly must contain one full group of at least one color is 175. This means that minimum number of balls is 175 which contain one full group of at least one color. Second statement is the smallest number m such that any m balls drawn from the box randomly must contain at least one ball of each color is 167. This means that minimum number of balls is 167 which contain at least one ball from each color. Which of the above statement is or are correct? Here at least one means. It can be one color, two colors, three colors, four colors, five colors or maximum up to six colors because there are total six colors here. That is we have 14, black here, 20, blue here, 26, green here, 28, yellow here, 38, red here. Finally we have 54, white here. That means total we have 180 balls here. So, in the first statement, it says that minimum number of balls is 175, which will contain one full group of at least one color. One full group means here black are 14. So, one full group means you must have either 14 black or 20 blue or 26 green or 28 yellow or 38 red or 54 white. So if I am drawing, let's check, if I am drawing 14 balls, if I am drawing 14 balls from this box, this is mixed colors, I am randomly drawing. So if I am drawing 14 balls, I am not sure whether it all black or not. It can be black, blue, green, yellow, red or white. I am not sure whether it will be all black. So, we have to create worst case scenario here. Worst case. That is, we have to draw maximum number of balls. Here, if I am drawing one less from each of these colors, that if I am drawing 13 black, 19 blue, 25 green, 27 yellow, 37 red, 53 white. That means total 180 minus 6 that is 174 balls. If I am drawing 174 randomly, it can be like this. That is without one full group of at least one color. There is no full group of colors here. Full group means if, if I have 14 black, that is full group. But here I have only 13. So if I am drawing one more ball from any of these colors, if I'm drawing one from here, now I have 14 black here. Now the condition is satisfied. That is 174 plus 1. 175 is the minimum number of balls that will contain one full group of at least one color. So statement 1 is correct. And if you check out the second statement, that is minimum number of balls is 167, which will contain at least one ball from each color. That is we need one ball from each of these six colors. So, if I'm drawing 54 white balls and 38 red balls and 28 yellow balls and 26 green balls and 20 blue balls. That means I'm having 180 minus 14 that is 166 balls. I'm having 166 balls from blue, green, yellow, red and white. But I am left with one black foot. I'm, I'm, I don't have black foot. So if I am adding one more ball, that means I have, I am having all the colors here.
So if I'm adding one more bowl, if I'm adding one more bowl, that means I'm having at least one bowl from all colors. So now the condition is satisfied. That is 167 is the minimum number of bowls that will contain at least one bowl from each color. So your answer is option C because both the statement are correct. A question is, is P greater than Q? Statement 1, PQ is greater than 0. Statement 2, P square is greater than Q square. Which one of the following is correct in respect of the above question and statements? Here our question is, is P greater than Q? So we have to check the statements. Statement 1 is, PQ is greater than 0. Here you can see, PQ is greater than 0 means, PQ can be positive numbers as well as negative numbers. So let's check the answers using numbers here. So here I will take positive as well as negative numbers for P and Q value. Here if I take P and Q values as 2 and 1 and negative numbers as minus 2 and minus 1. Here you can also use P and Q values as 3 and 2 and negative number as minus 3 and minus 2. Also here you can use 4 and 3 or minus 4 and minus 3 and so on. So I will take for the first numbers. That is if P is 2 and Q is 1, you can see PQ is equal to 2 into 1 which is greater than 0. Here P is equal to 2, Q is equal to 1. That means P is greater than Q because 2 is greater than 1. Same way, if I take P as minus 2 and Q as minus 1, that means PQ is equal to minus 2 into minus 1, which is already greater than 0. Here you can see P is minus 2 and Q is minus 1. So, P is less than Q because minus 2 is less than minus 1. So, in the first case, P is greater than Q and in the second case, P is less than Q. So, we cannot determine with the statement 1 alone that is p is greater than q so we cannot determine this one using first state statement alone so let's take the second statement that is p square greater than q square here you can see if i put a value of p as 2 and q as 1 you can see p square that is 2 square is greater than q square that is 1 square here you can see P is 2, Q is 1, that is P is greater than Q. And if I put the value of P as minus 2 and Q as minus 1, you can see minus 2 square is greater than minus 1 square. But you can see P is less than Q because P is minus 2 and Q is minus 1, minus 2 less than minus 1. So, in the first case P is greater than Q and in the second case P is less than Q. So, we cannot determine P is greater than Q using the second statement alone. So, if you use this both the statement together that is P is PQ is greater than 0 and P square greater than Q square. If you use both the statement together P can be greater than Q as well. P can be less than Q. So, we cannot determine P is greater than Q using both these statements together. So, the question cannot be answered you even using both the statements together. So, option D is your answer. A cupoid of dimension 7 by 5 by 3 is painted red, green and blue color on each pair of opposite faces of dimension 7 by 5, 5 by 3, 7 by 3 respectively. Then the cupoid is cut and separated into various cube each of side length 1 cm. Which of the following statement is or are correct? Statement number 1. There are exactly 15 small cube with no paint on any face. Statement number 2. There are exactly... Six small cube with exactly two faces, one painted with blue and the other with green. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Here you can see this cupoid is not equally distributed. That is, x, y, and the z axis have different dimensions. In that case, cubes with no paint on any face or inner cubes is equal to x minus 2, that is 7 minus 2, 
into y minus 2 that is 5 minus 2 into z minus 2 that is 3 minus 2 that is equal to 5 into 3 into 1 equal to 15. So statement 1 is correct. If you have doubt let's take here this is x this is y and this is z axis. Now the cuboid is cut into small pieces with each of side length 1 centimeter. That means 7 centimeter x axis cut into 7 sections and 5 centimeter y axis cut into 5 sections and 3 centimeter z axis cut into 3 sections. Now if you want to find out the inner cubes or cubes with no paint on any face that means take the x axis and cut the lower and upper portions. Now take the y axis cut the right and left portions that is cut the edges. Now the middle portion 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 is your answer. That is if you have doubt take the upper portion. This one will not count. 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 The counting portion is middle part that is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And if you check the right side this one will not come 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 middle part is 1 2 and 3 now 5 into 3 15 is your answer so you can find this way or this way now if you look at the second statement there are exactly six small cubes with exactly two faces one with blue one is green so we have to find cubes with exactly two faces one is blue and one is green here you can see this is blue this is green right and left side have green color top and bottom side have blue color front and back side have red color now you want blue and green color with exactly two faces here this one can count this is blue and this is green same way this one can count this is green this will be blue here this is blue and this will be green here in the x side opposite you have blue and green side so that is one two three four so there are four small cubes with exactly two faces painted with blue one green colors so you have four cubes with exactly two faces painted with blue and green color. So statement 2 is incorrect and your answer is option A. Statement 1 only is correct.